Hello everyone and welcome to the 9.30 breakout session of the Open Simulator Community Conference 2013. As a reminder to our in-world and web audiences, you can view the full conference schedule at our website at conference.opensimulator.org and you can post your questions in local chat or on the Ustream chat or tweet your comments using the hashtag OSCC13. This hour we're happy to introduce Maria Korolov and Olivia Bettini who will be presenting New World Studio, OpenSim setup tool for dummies. Maria Korolov is the editor and publisher of Hypergrid Business. She's been a journalist for the past 20 years, starting at the Chicago Tribune. She's been covering technology for the past 15 years, starting at Computer World. Today, she also writes for CIO Magazine, Network World, PC World, and other technology and finance magazines. Maria will be accompanied by Olivia Bettini. Olivia is an IT security analyst and a 3D learning consultant based in the south of France. He is the CEO of Viria, a virtual world consulting company and the founder of the Virtus Association, which runs the non-profit New World Grid. Welcome, Maria Korolov. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. And uh, I guess I should have uh, sat down here first so that I can pull up my slides um, ahead of time. Um, what I'm going to talk about is um, uh, is how to set up OpenSim if you are a total, total, complete idiot, which is what I was when I first started um, working on this. And my slides are not coming up. Ah, I had to clear out the... Really sorry about this. I practiced this last night, too. Um, the, the slides are also available online, and there will be um, a link to it. Um, I don't have, okay, um, this did work last night for me, okay, um, I am going to, um, uh, I, I don't know what I'm going to do, um, uh, <laughs> can I have any suggestions? Uh, I guess I can pull them up on a, on a web page, um, and, uh, give them to you here, um, but uh, the, the the main idea with the slides is that um, it's you can set up OpenSim in literally a few minutes, and um, uh, and I've used Open Studio to do this, and and I am really sorry. Now it works. Okay. Yay. It's working. Okay, it just took uh, a little bit to activate it. Yay. All right. Oh, what a relief. Okay. All right, I'm going to go through these um, uh, a little quicker um, because uh, my presentation turned out to be a little bit longer than I expected it to be. My contact information is here. It's also going to be at the end of the slide pack. Um, and I'm going to be covering um, other types of um, uh, OpenSim distributions as well because uh, there was supposed to be two panels about how to set up OpenSim. Um, but uh, it turns out that I'm, I'm just, it's just having the one. Uh, so the OpenSim distributions by ranking of difficulty is first OpenSimilar.org is the hardest, then the Diva Distro, then Sim on a Stick, and um, uh, the OpenSimilator.org is the main website where you can download this OpenSim software. It's it's the the big it's the real thing. If you want to run a full grid with thousands of users, this is where you download the software. You have to know how to use the databases. You have to know how to use MySQL. You have to know how to, how to do the networking and everything else. And you have to manually configure all the files, manually do all the upgrades and migrations. So this is for the advanced user. Um, the Diva distro 
uh, has built-in upgrades. It's, it's the configuration files are all set. It has a built-in web interface to show stats and create new users. But you still have to set up the database and the web server, and it only allows for the, like mini grids, like of one, four, nine, or sixteen or so regions. Um, the Simona stick is even easier to set up than the Diva Distro. It can run on a USB stick. Uh, you only have to run uh, two separate set of programs, one for the databases and then one for the open sim, and then it pretty much configures itself. Um, uh, you still have to enter in some settings and, and things, but you don't have to deal with any configuration files. But again, like the Diva Distro, which it's based on, you can only use it for little well, mini grids. Um, uh, th then uh, there's some individual grids also have their own versions of OpenSim for their for their own users where you can set up a region like OS Grid and Metropolis have it. So so uh, we'll rush through that. Uh, so uh, NewWorldStudio.net this is the the newest and latest uh, distribution of OpenSim, and it's extremely easy to use. Everything's installed automatically. Everything is pre-configured. Um, if you want to configure it manually, you can. All the options you have available for the previous three versions that I mentioned are still available here. You're not losing any functionality. You're, being, you're getting some extra configuration features. Um, the downsides, the, from, from what I'm seeing from New World Studio, the downside is that it's not uh, updated as often as Diva Distro and Simona Stick. And um, you will still need to do some editing, uh, if much easier editing of configuration files than with the other distributions, but, but still you have to do a little bit. And if you want to do really advanced features, you'll have to use the console, which is true for every OpenSIM distribution, and, and you do have access to the console. Um, so, so, so I'm going to be talking about the, the only the free version here today, so the one uh, where you don't have to pay for it, just download it and use it. So to get started, you go to this website, and um, these slides will be available uh, online, so you don't have to write this down. Um, you click the download button. It took me, I, I went through this again this week, just to make sure that I had everything, the latest version. So you can pick the Windows, Mac, or Linux download. It took me 10 minutes to download it, because all the files come as part of this packet. Um, and uh, you know, it might be different for you depending on uh, how, how your internet speed connection is. It downloads as a zipped file. Uh, you extract that zip file into a folder, which is what you would often do this when you download software. Um, remember to keep a co backup copy of the zipped file just in case. You don't have to download the whole thing at once. Um, you unzip it, and then you run the installer program. It's called newworldstudio.exe. Um, you, um, uh, where was I? Okay, so uh, then this little screen will come up for starting the world. Click on the first blue button right on top. The little red button down at the bottom, that's the commercial paid version. So you click the blue button on top. Then um, you say no here. Again, it's asking you if you want to upgrade to the commercial paid version. Uh, you s accept to allow access um, to, to, for, for this program to make changes to your computer. And um, uh, you wait a couple of minutes while it configures everything. You, don't, you can lift your hands up. You don't have to touch the whole, you don't have to touch anything. Next, you click on this middle button, the middle blue button that says enter the world. Uh, again, the bottom button is for the paid version, so you can ignore that. Click the middle button. And it loads up whatever your default viewer is, and you are in the world. It is literally that easy to get your virtual world going. This is it. This is what, five clicks? Um, uh, most of the time is spent waiting for the first download to take place. And this is all it takes to set up um, a little one region mini grid on your own computer. And uh, you have a little default avatar, he's a little construction guy, uh, and, you, and you can do whatever you want. Um, if your um, 
depending on how your modem is set up, you might uh, be automatically hypergrid enabled. And next, I will tell you how to make changes to that and how to customize it. But first, does anyone have any questions about, you know, this like easy to use all default settings uh, in the configuration of New World Studio? <laughs> And I'll wait a few seconds for the lag to catch up so uh, <laughs> so people can ask the questions. And <laughs> um, can you download to the flash drive? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a zip file. You can install that zip file uh, anywhere you want. Uh, so uh, the SIM on a stick uh, comes ready for a kind of a flash installation. What I've been doing is when I unzip it, um, I have I unzip it several times for each little mini grid I have and title each folder a different thing. So you will take that entire whole folder and you would stick it on a USB on a USB and you can run it off the USB. Um, it's um, it's uh, I haven't run it on a USB. The one who's been doing that is Enter Hacks. She's the she's the leader of it. And and I have the link to um, the Simonistic. Uh, site where there's a discussion on her blog of of the exact which sticks work better and what the, what the delay is like and so on and so forth. So, um, um, any other questions about the the easy default setup? Okay. <sighs> All right. So let's talk about customizations. All right. Um, uh, at the beginning, um, I've, I said keep a copy of the unzipped one. Uh, somebody asked me if it's standalone only uh, or is it possible to link it to any grid. It is set up as a standalone mini grid. Um, in, you can connect individual regions to a grid, but that would involve more configuration things than um, I can go through here, and if, in fact, I don't even know how to do it. Uh, when I attach a region to a grid, I normally use the grid's own installers for doing this. Uh, so this New World Studio is is ideally set up for either a hypergrid enabled mini grid or a local mini grid that you would use for your own building at home. Okay, so um, the thing about New World Studio is some of the changes um, uh, need to be made before the first time the world starts up. Like, you know, how many regions it has, what the starting ores are, what the starting avatar is, that kind of thing. So you will need to, um, if you followed along this, this slide step by step and loaded up your own default world, you need to go back to this original zip file, unzip it again, and start over from scratch. And that, that's why I, I didn't delete it. That's why I kept it. So you unzip the file, you open up the folder, and next to the newworldstudio.exe file, there's a newworldstudio.ini file, and the INI stands for initialization settings. It is a tiny file. The, the picture I have on, it, on the screen is the entire thing. Okay, I had to squeeze it down a little bit to get to fit on one, on one screen, but that's the whole file. Um, you can open it up in a notepad, and, and you can start editing it in a notepad or WordPad or any other text editor that you're going to use. And uh, so the first section up top is the information about the world. So you can change the name of your grid. Uh, the, by default, it's New World Studio. So you can just type in uh, a different grid name right over it. And, um, and that will be the, the new name of your grid. You can make your world bigger than one region by changing the size. Size X here is one, size Y is one, so it's a one by one world, that's the default. You could, uh, typical configurations are two by two, three by three, four by four, but you can also make it three by two and four by two. And the maximum size of the world depends on the power of your computer. I don't recommend going more than, bigger than four by four or 16 regions on a typical, a typical desktop. Uh, mega regions. By default, mega regions are set to false. Um, when you turn it to when you turn it to true, region crossings go away. 
this is really nice if you're making one one campus or one role playing area where people and vehicles are traveling back and forth around it. And then when you save a backup, you're going to save a backup of it as a whole big unit. If you're building individual regions, so you want to sell or save them individually one by one, then you want to set mega regions to false so that you can save them individually instead of saving them all as one big giant thing. Um, I love mega regions. I, I use them whenever I possibly can because I hate border crossings. Um, but uh, individual regions designers, it would be an obstacle for them. Um, by default, the world is located at the position 7,000, 7,000. Um, if you know how OpenSim and Second Life work, it's, it's, the regions are located in a giant grid, giant numbered grid. And um, the problem uh, in OpenSim is that you can't jump more than 4,096 regions in any direction. Because I guess in Second Life, the entire grid fits into you know, that area and nobody needed to jump farther. In, in OpenSim, however, some grids are up at 10,000, 10,000, and some grids are at 1,000, 1,000. I recommend that people put their grids around the 7,000 mark, so it's an easy hop to OS grid and other major grids, and you're only one intermediary hop away to some of the smaller grids at the 1,000 place. There's some educational grids down there. I do not recommend keeping them as round numbers, however, because you can't jump between two regions with exactly the same coordinates. If you want to know why your hypergrid jumps fail, this could be one of the reasons. In, in Second Life, obviously, no two regions can have the same coordinates or you, or you have significant issues there with your grid. Uh, so the, the teleports don't work if you're traveling from the same between two regions with the same numbers. So I recommend changing the 7,000 to something like 7,243, some odd number that other people aren't likely to occupy. Otherwise, if you leave it at 7,000 and your friend leaves it at 7,000 and you want to teleport over to his grid and you both have the default settings, then um, you're not going to be able to make it. Uh, I would like to see this changed to a random number in the 7,000 range if, you know, if Olivier takes requests to, to help avoid this issue. Um, oh, uh, one thing I want to mention while I'm still on this section of the file um, is see where it says at the bottom IP address equals local host. Uh, you can also change that to your external IP address um, if you're having problems connecting on a hypergrid. I can't guarantee that it will work if you do this um, because, as I want to explain later, I, have, I am not a networking expert, but that's one of the things you can try. So um, uh, next is the avatar information. You can change the first name of your avatar, the last name of your avatar. You can change the avatar's password. And you can change the, the actual starting avatar. By default, the starting avatar's name is Benjiro. But there are three other starting avatars you could be using when you launch your grid. There's Benjiro. There's Benjiro 2. There's Kara and there's Kara 2. And all you do is you replace the name Benjiro with one of the others. Don't forget the space between Benjiro and 2 and Kara 2. So um, um, you can also, um, a little bit further down the initialization file, you can also change your default viewer. Right now, by default, the New World Studio will run whatever viewer you have set as your default viewer. But maybe you want a different viewer. Say you want, say you, you want to use Imprudence for building in your local grid, but you use uh, Firefox everywhere else. You would set the used custom viewer setting to true. Then you type in the, the viewer path without the quotation marks. So mine was, for example, when I wanted to use Firestorm. Mine was C colon backslash program files backslash Firestorm release backslash Firestorm release dot exe, you will have a different um, viewer path depending on how you where, where you installed your viewers. And you can also change a starting or similar to the way you changed the avatar. There, there's a selection of ors you can pick from. Uh, the selection of ors comes with five five ORs you start with. There's the OpenVCE, which is the default, which is a little bit of a conference center. 
There's a totally flat one. There's a Linda Kelly Business District, a Linda Kelly Mountain Retreat, and an Undersea Observatory. Um, these are all folder names. That's how you know that these are starting regions. Copy and paste the entire name. The parentheses, the periods, ever, everything. You want to get it exactly right. Um, you want to avoid typos. You can also use your own OR. Uh, what you do is you, you type in the name of your, of your region, uh, of the, of the OR file, into the INI file. You create a new folder inside the regions folder with the name of your OR. You copy, take a copy of your OR and put it into that folder and rename the OR file itself region. So the name of it goes into the folder name, the region is just called region. And if, if, uh, if Olivier is still taking requests, uh, what one I would like to see is make this process a little bit easier so that you don't have to rename your OR files and stuff like that. That it would just pull in the name list of OR files from the regions instead of pulling in the folder names. Okay, so hypergrid. Um, so I mentioned the IP address, the local host uh, thing a few slides back. Um, the default New World Studio is hypergrid enabled. You can teleport out to OS Grid, Metropolis Grid, Franco Grid, Craft, and hundreds of other grids. But I cannot guarantee that you will be able to do it. I myself, I've been installing OpenSIM on all of my computers since 2009. My track record is about 33% for getting hypergrid working, and I don't know what makes the difference. So I can't help anybody do it. I can just say try random things until something works because I'm not a networking expert. Issues that are involved have to do with your particular router configuration, your particular port forwarding setup, your NAT loopback or whatever that is. So uh, I'm not an expert on these things. Um, if you need experts on these things, email me and I'll set you up with the various discussion groups, listservs help centers, et cetera, for people who, who do know how this stuff works. All right, so uh, let's talk about the console. Okay, so 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 all, all the previous changes were in the INI file. Uh, you save that INI file and you run, um, and you could run New World Studio and those changes will be in there. If you want to make other kinds of changes, you'll have to make them in the con OpenSIM console itself. And this is what the OpenSIM console um, uh, setting is. It's called show OS window. It's in the INI file. You change this to true. You run, uh, you run um, a New World Studio. That's the last change you have to make to your INI file. Now you run New World Studio. And in addition to the little New World Studio window popping up, you will also get the console window popping up, and it looks, I mean, look at, look at it, it looks horrible. It, it looks like one of those old PC DOS windows from a million years ago. This is what you pay hosting companies to deal with when, when they're doing stuff with OpenSIM. Um, there's a long, giant list of commands available that you can use on a console. I'm only going to give you the top four, five commands that you're going to need. Uh, it's, it's not too hard. Just type it in. You hit return. Um, and then, you know, if you type something wrong, everything breaks. You know, I can't help you there. Make plenty of backups. All right. Uh, so the first command is show regions, and it gives you a list of all the regions on your uh, simulator. So, so if you have four regions or eight regions or 16 regions, it'll give you all their names and all the coordinates. Then in order to do anything to a region, you have to change the simulator's attention to that region. And you do this by typing in change region, then the region name. This is kind of for you old people who remember DOS. It's kind of like the, the CD change drive command, or where you uh, change to a particular folder, you know, to, to navigate uh, the directories. Um, so you can change change a region to go uh, down in there. And then once you've got yourself focused on the region you want to do stuff to. You can save a copy of that region by just typing save or file name, and it saves uh, the entire region to that file name. It saves it to the local OpenSIM folder if you don't give a full file name, or you can give a full file name extension. And you can also load an OR into that region by typing load OR file name. 
Uh, and uh, two other uh, easy commands are the inventory archive. So when you save an inventory archive, you have to give the avatar's first name, last name, the inventory folder you're trying to save. You don't have to save the whole inventory. You can just save a particular folder, a password of the avatar, then the file name you're saving it to. And similarly, you can also load inventory archives. And the reason you would use inventory archives is if you want to move a whole avatar from one region to another, or if you want to give somebody a whole bunch of content. Say you have a nice pack of plants or something that you've created and you want to email it to somebody. You can send it like one plant at a time with an XML file that they would upload. And, um, you know, it's, it takes a long time and it's a nightmare and the textures get lost and, you know, all that stuff. Or you can just save, put it in a folder, save it as an IR file and email it to them. Some online sites distribute content this way. Uh, Linda Kelly has IAR files for a lot of her content, which makes it really easy when you start up a new grid. You can just load up these IRs into, into the, for the default avatars and things like that. IRs are, are really nice. And then um, more commands, if that's not enough for you, is in the Open, open Simulator Wiki. They've got a whole lot of them. You can change the terrain height. You can uh, rename regions. You can boot individual avatars. You can do stuff to the database. You can do stuff to content. You, I mean, all sorts of stuff you can do once you have the console. Okay. So um, we're, um, we're at the halfway point. All right. So we've got... Um, uh, the, the main part of it all set up, how to do anything you want with the New World Studio without paying a dime. All right. So um, uh, before we go on to Olivier, does anyone have any questions for me? Cam? Yes, I did have a question come through earlier. I'll just pull it up for you. And mm -hmm. somebody was asking, uh, is it standalone only, or is it possible to link into any grid? Okay. Uh, yes. So, uh, as I mentioned, you can hypergrid out to other grids uh, if you're if you're able to turn on the networking stuff. If you plug it in directly to to your modem instead of going through a router, hypergrid connectivity is a lot easier. I've tried it both ways, and it works almost all the time for me if I plug it in directly to to the to my internet modem. Um, as far as attaching a region to a grid, uh, normally what I do is I download the grid's own installer for that uh, because it's pre-configured to the grid's own settings. The New World Studio does not come with any of those settings. So if you want to take a region and uh, we, take, take the New World Studio, which is designed to work as a mini grid, and you want to reconfigure it to work as a single region, you'll have to spend a lot of time in the deep, dark configuration files getting it to work. Um, I don't recommend it. If you're going to be doing it that way, uh, go to opensim.org and download the single region version of OpenSim instead. Um, or go to your grid and, and get the configuration files from them. Most, most open grids should have a page set up where you can download the configuration files. I gave you the ones for OpenSim and Metropolis. Um, every grid is different, and um, I've, I've done it once with OS Grid, but that was a few years back, and I'm sure things have changed since then, so I cannot answer any specific technical questions about how to do it. Any other questions? Uh, I do have a couple more that have come in here. I'll just throw them to you. The first one is, um, can a normal user actually set this up, or do you have to be some kind of a developer, somebody's asked? Um, well, as you saw from the beginning thing with the five clicks, all you need to be able to do is download and unzip a file. Um, and I think pretty much anybody can do that. And then after that, you just click, 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 and you're in world. I mean, you look like a construction worker, but you're in world, you've got your region, you're up and running. So that takes no, no skill whatsoever. If you're able to edit a simple text file, uh, which, which I've mentioned, then you can do things like change your starting avatar, change your starting region. Um, the console commands, 
th those are harder. Um, it, it took, it takes like courage to go in there because it looks scary. Um, and the average user is not going to want to do that. Um, I mean, really, it's really hard to convince somebody to go in and e edit those things. Um, I mean, it's hard enough to get somebody to edit a text file, uh, really. If you are going to be doing this for, um, for like, a, say, a school or a company where you're giving it out to a large number of users to set it up, and you want them to do it on their own, um, I would talk to Olivier about getting a custom setup. So get a custom version of New World Studio that's already pre-configured with your ORs, your company starting avatars, or your school starting avatars, and your settings. Um, because um, you, you, you can make mistakes. You know, the text files, you get a wrong comma in there, nothing works, and then you can't figure out why and what, what went wrong. There's no error checking built in when you edit a text file. So if you want to make it foolproof, um, you, you really should have people use the default settings if at all possible. Anything else or can we turn over, turn it over to um, Olivier to talk about why people might want to, even though they can do everything for free, why they might still want to upgrade to a commercial version. Um, while he does that, while you guys are thinking about it, I am going to, um, there's a contact page, and I'm going to pull up the address for these slides. It's bit.ly slash open sim for dummies. That's it. So you can go and you can look at these slides. Feel free to forward it to anybody. Um, and it's, that's a permanent address. It's going to stay up there. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, well, why don't I, um, uh, Olivier, why don't you um, uh, take my place here? And uh, yes, life is much easier with a hosting company to do it all for you. Then if something goes wrong, you can just like email them and say, fix this and uh, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> all right. So um, I'm going to post the address of the presentation in local chat as well. So you can just copy it. Here's the full address. Um, okay, uh, we're not hearing Olivier. Um, um, Olivier, are you having problems? Hi. Hi. Okay, good. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay, I guess I guess some people are are having connection issues. Um, I was just asking Olivier if um, he can talk about why people should upgrade to the paid version of New World Studio, even though they can do everything they want with the free one. Sure. <coughs> yes. So <laughs> first, uh, Maria, thank you for your great presentation. And uh, so, why would you upgrade to the paid version? Uh, well, most of the technical people uh, are used to OpenSim and to go in the files to configure for uh, what they want to do. Uh, but sometimes you, you just want to 
to stop losing time and uh, do only what you, you what you have to do with OpenSim. Uh, that is, for example, designing and uh, and then uploading to your grid. Uh, you can you can do whatever you want. So. Um, Uh, how much does it cost? Well, it depends on um, it depends on what you <laughs> it depends on what you you do exactly. In fact, uh, for for the for uh, for the moment, I didn't limited uh, the features. Uh, I just um, offered uh, licenses according to how you use uh, New World Studio. Uh, for example, um, individuals using it for home uh, can buy it for um, about 15 euros. That is perhaps around $20. And uh, educators can buy it for 30 euros. And if you want to use it for uh, profit, uh, you can buy the, the pro version for uh, around 50 euros. So this isn't uh, limited in with features. Uh, this is based only on usage. And what are some of the features that the commercial version of New World Studio adds? Uh, well, um, it has um, all the features that you described um, that we can do manually uh, with the console, for example, or in the ini file. You can do it uh, through the interface of, of New World Studio. So, for example, you can uh, go to public uh, 3D world with a, a single click. Um, that is, New World Studio will configure your files uh, automatically and configure your router, your uh, firewall. And, uh, and you can also uh, have an easier choice for predefined avatars and 3D worlds. You can even uh, load your, your own or, um, OR files or IRR files. You can you can set uh, an exact number of regions for your world. And you have also advanced configuration settings. Uh, for example, in the next, in the next uh, development, you will be able to configure each region uh, separately. You will be able to uh, backup and restore content for the world grid or for a single region. And uh, you also can um, uh, select a custom uh, viewer. Uh, so uh, New World Studio will not um, start the, the viewer that is shipped with it, that is Imprudence. And uh, there are also uh, nice features for, for the future that already uh, work and that I, I need to adapt to New World Studio, for example, procedural terrain generation. So you could um, uh, make a random terrain for the world grid uh, when you set, set it up. And I also plan to add 3D complex molecules. Uh, for example, uh, you can um, uh, load a, a molecule file on your own web server or you can uh, request the pdb.org website, which is um, a public database of, of, com of complex molecules. So this is advanced use, but uh, this is what you, you will be able to do in the future. So uh, I'm leaving um, a link if anyone is interested for this list of features. Uh, thanks for reminding me about the viewer. I forgot to mention this. When you first download New World Studio, the the viewer is included. So if you're sending this to somebody who's never used Second Life or OpenSim and don't have a viewer downloaded, it will install the viewer for them. And and in fact, this one of the major reasons why the download is so long is because it includes not just the database software, the OpenSim software, the web 
server software, but also the viewer to run, um, to access OpenSIM. And um, I mean, it's it's a really great little in, com combined, pack, tightly packaged installer. It's very nice. Yes, indeed, yes. Uh, yes, most most of the distros are um, are, are not um, shipping everything. So th this is the aim of New World Studio to to have everything uh, set up in one time and uh, make it easier for people to discover a pensim and eventually uh, use it every day uh, without losing time with uh, manipulations. Do you know how many people have downloaded New World Studio so far? Uh, I've, I've, I don't have any recent uh, stats yet, but uh, so far uh, I can remember of uh, uh, not of downloads numbers, but uh, installs that are more a thousand. I, uh, I think uh, I can uh, bring more uh, updated uh, stats. Eventually, so there's more than a thousand installations of it. Not not just downloads, but act people actually ran it and installed it and set up a grid. Yes, right. Wow, very cool. Uh, Cam, are there any other questions from the audience? Uh, yes, I've got a couple of questions coming in here. Firstly. What license type is being offered on the free version of NWS? Is it Creative Commons or what type of license he's asking? What kind of license when uh, purchasing the paid version? Um, the the, the, the difference, version. I guess, between the free version and the paid version. The free version was actually asked about in the question. Oh, yes, the, the free version um, is limited by um, the start and stop uh, 3D World and, uh, and, the st and the login to 3D World Building. So, and, um, so the, uh, the lic licenses are not, um, uh, are not uh, about, um, uh, how can I say, um, it's not about code. Um, it's about usage, in fact. It's a GPL open source license, right? For the for the main part of the OpenSIM software. Well, OpenSIM is based on BSD license. Oh, yes. Sorry, BSD. And, yes, and there is GPL for the viewer. But uh, but there is no. Um, no New York, New York Studio is not open source. This is um, a license, license based on news agent, in fact. And, and the, but that's, that just the, that's the, just the installer, the New World Studio packager installer interface part, not the viewer, open sim, all that keeps the open source license and only the little bit of installer part is your proprietary code. Yes, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's just... Um, a graphical user interface that um, simply configures and, and launches executables. So there is no real, um, um, there is no code um, uh, inside the, the two parts, in fact. There is no command call be uh, between New World Studio interface and the other packages of uh, open source uh, software. So, um, I hope I okay. answered the question. <laughs> yes, I hope you've answered the question there. <laughs> I do have another question, it's possibly more for Maria, but somebody is asked, asking, are you going to be adding more starter ores and avatars to the package? Uh, excuse me, c can you repeat the question? Um, are, you, are you going to be adding more starter uh, ores, um, oh, ORs yes. and avatars? Yes, yes. Okay, so um, that would be a growing library. 
Yes, yes. Um, in fact, uh, I didn't um, take time uh, for adding things like that, but uh, if people know about uh, Creative Commons content or open source content, uh, I can add them quite easily in the next uh, distribution. <coughs> I have a follow-up question to that, um, if I can interject. Um, OpenSIM has the ability to, up to, to install ORs right from a website. Can you add a feature where you would just give the URL of the OR or the IAR and OpenSIM Studio will install it without you having to download it and distribute it as part of the package? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah it's, it's already working, so we can just uh, specify uh, URLs and uh, f for the avatars or regions, and it will download it uh, automatically at the first region startup. And uh, it already works, yeah, we can, we can adjust URLs. Excellent. I'm gonna paste a local link for Linda Kelly's ores. You can just um, so if people want a few dozen more really nice ore files, they can get them there. And her IAR files are here. Thanks. All right, and and Cam says he's lost audio connection. Uh, yes, so uh, uh, Linda Kelly has a lot of a lot of um, beautiful, fully set up or files uh, of for all kinds business districts, uh, of winter gardens, of uh, commercial districts, uh, shopping malls, fully stocked, um, really really nice. Um, okay, so. Um, if Cam has lost his voice, um, it's okay. I've I've got oh. it back now. I think. Oh, oh, good. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> so we only have a few minutes okay, left yeah, for uh, last-minute questions. Uh, okay, let's throw it back to the audience now. Um, has anybody got any more questions for Olivia or for Maria? Yeah. Uh, as people type those in, I just want to say that um, a lot of OpenSIM developers work for free um, because their job pays for it or because they also run a hosting company or a grid or because it's their life's passion and they're independently wealthy. Uh, but in order to encourage people to add really cool features and tools to, to the OpenSIM community, um, it, it is a really nice gesture to for people who can afford it or in a situation to afford it to, to buy the commercial versions of these things and, and help support the existing developers and encourage more developers, more content creators to come to the community. So uh, I'm a big proponent of this and um, it's uh, the New World Studio Premium Edition is not a lot of money, 15 euros or $20 is a very small amount of amount of money to pay for a lot of usability and uh, you don't have to worry about configuring the text file or the console. Everything is with an easy click and approve kind of interface. So you, it's a foolproof interface. You can't make mistakes. You can't mess it up. So um, I, I, do, I, I do recommend that. Um, I, I love getting stuff for free, but it, it's also a good thing to, to support people who are putting in the effort to, to do stuff in this community. All right, that's, that's my two cents. <laughs> okay, Thank so you. if we've got no more questions, we should wrap it up there. Okay. Uh, yes, and uh, if, and if <laughs> anything has follow-up questions after this, my uh, contact information is on the slides. I'm also going to type it into local chat. Maria at Hypergrid Business dot com. Uh, I am not independently wealthy, uh, but I have a day job that allows me to spend quite a bit of my free time doing open sim stuff, and I love this. And I will answer. I will answer anybody's question. 
You can even call me on the phone if you wanted to. Uh, my contact information is up on the website too. <laughs> well, thank you, Maria, for your presentation, and uh, and thank you, everyone, too, for uh, your questions and uh, listening. So, if you have questions, uh, anything, you can contact me at this email address. And I will be happy to, to answer. And, and okay. both of those. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, for Maria. Thanks, Cam. Great. Well, thank you for, for having us here. Okay. I really appreciate, appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. Thank you. And for our audience, in this room, the next session will be at 12.30. And there will be an introduction to Kitely Markets, the Metaverse Marketplace with Ilan Tokner. Thank and you again me, to our speakers and, and to the audience. <laughs> we'll <laughs> and of I'll course. be back. <laughs> All right. So um, we're breaking now for lunch, uh, followed by the uh, afternoon keynote speakers. All right, well, this was fun, and hey, I got all those slides in within our time limit.